Congratulations, Vault Bros. It looks like it's finally your time to shine. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Tower of Fantasy video, and today we will be discussing how exactly we should be playing Mr. Tian Lang over here. So he is going to be the new Global Shatterer released in, I don't know, by the time you see this video, he's probably already out. And so to start things off, we have the Thunderbreaker Normal Attack Passive, in which every four normal attacks will charge the weapon, stacking up to five charge points. Now, what exactly that is, is that, oh, hello there. Um, it's that when we are in the spirit weapon, every four attacks, one, two, three, four, you're gonna see something pop up over here. I think it's this one right here, charge point. And so every time we do four hits, we get a charge point, as you can see, three, and then we can go up to five stacks eventually. And so what exactly these charge points are used for are primarily for the dodge attack. So if I dodge attack, you'll see that the charge point has gone from five to four. But what you also would have noticed was that there was a lightning bolt that actually strikes down on the cactus. Boom. Boom, look at that guy go. And so that lightning bolt that you see every time we dash attack is what makes dash attack spamming so effective because every time it hits, it deals damage equal to 3% of the HP lost. So if we have like 100% HP is 100K and right now we're down to like 30K, that means we've lost 70K HP. And that means that we're going to scale off of that 70K HP, 3% of that 70K HP that was lost. On top of that, we also have Electrified Entity, which deals area vault damage equal to 2% of the HP lost. And so as you can tell, it's not only vault damage or attack that Tianlang is going to be dependent on, it's actually HP. Because the more HP you have, the more HP you can actually lose. So therefore scaling these guys up. What vault attack does do, however, is it adds the limiters to the total damage that you can deal. Because even though you can juice your HP to like a million HP, you can only ever do between between 100 to 1000% of your vault attack for the lightning damage and then the electrified entity from 40 up to 400%. So the vault attack essentially defines your limiters in terms of how much you can do. And then your current HP or like the HP loss will define how much you actually do. And so all of that is going to be forming a lot of the damage that Thunderbreaker is going to dish out. Now, before I keep going, I did forget to talk about one thing and that is that he has shatter. He has 12 12.5 shatter and the reason that this is amusing is because in previous versions or CN version whatever you want to call it he actually has more charge I believe like 12 charge and 8 shatter and I do believe that this is to compensate for the lack of the Bayou Equi and so honestly without even looking at the rest of the kit if you are a vault gamer I believe you do want the Tianlang because he is the best shatterer on the vault type and so moving into the attacks themselves what we see here is the normal attack chain from a DPS point of view, it's actually quite strong. However, the most important thing about the normal attack chain is that thing that you see on the ground, which is a field. Now, what this field is, is it's actually a summon from Tianlang. And the reason that it's so important is because it actually interacts with the E or one skill and the discharge as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And so to get that field down on the ground, I believe it's like the fourth attack where he jumps up, boom. And so as you can see, it has laid the field. Now, outside of using that for the field, I would say that that the normal attack, whilst good, is probably not going to be your go-to combo, although the DPS is actually quite nice. On the other hand, in the air, we have the standard aerial attack where it's just a whole bunch of slashes. And as we all know, it is going to be putting you in a very vulnerable position to get hit out of the air. I personally don't like aerials. I don't think I ever will. But in terms of sustained DPS, it actually has pretty similar DPS to the normal attack on the ground. Now, the next one is the most important, which is your auto attack into attack hold. Auto attack, attack hold. And then you freaking go into a rigging break dance, my guys. And the reason that this is so important is because you can see how many attacks it's actually doing. And if you think back to the passive, the passive that is gaining us these dash charges over here, the way that we accumulate these charge points is actually from the amount of attacks hit. So if you can see, look at how slow like these attacks are. Okay, it's not actually that bad, but like what is even faster is freaking break dancing. Like look at it go. And not only are you busting out the freaking cool moves, you can see that there is actually a vortex that is happening. And Yes, I mean no or yes, it is not only a visual effect, it actually does suck them in. If you do want a little bit of proof as to what I said, you can see here, attack, hold, and it is going to gather enemies around you. Everyone has a suck these days, man. <laughs> and so what is important about this suck is that it has a massive aftercast. Like you go da 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 da, and then as you can see, that is a that is a big ass aftercast that I have to stand still, and then I can do it another attack after that. Now, so what you want to do is you actually want to cancel that by doing the da 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 dash attack, and then going back into the breakdance and then dash attack, so that the dash attack actually cancels 
that last after cast of like probably 0.7 seconds. It's really freaking annoying and it feels really, really clunky. But by combining it with the dash attack, it's going to let you avoid most of that after cast animation. And so the last attack that I do want to talk about is the aerial attack. So boom, and then you could do a dive. And so for some reason, I don't know why, but Hotza really likes to make it so that the dive attacks do a lot of damage. And so as you can tell, there is time for the jetpack Tianlang. So boom, boom. Make sure that you get all the hits in. And as you can see, it actually sucks up a lot of the endurance. Boom. But if I was to go from a pure DPS point of view, that jetpack Tianlang, the jetpack spear, actually does the most damage out of all of the chains. It's better than doing this. It's better than doing like the aerial. It's better than doing like the break dance. It's like da 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 da. Yes, this is actually the best. And so before we go on and talk about the skill, let's quickly talk about the Alioth, which is the dash attack. Now, the dash attack is kind of like a signature move. It really makes you feel like Cloud Strife. So I'm gonna go dash attack. And as you can see, there was a lightning bolt that hit, right? And that lightning bolt is being consumed or it's consuming those charges. So if I actually consume all of these charges, you'll see that there is no lightning bolt. So every time I did dash attack, it did two hits, but now it should only do it once. Boom. And as you can see, there was no lightning bolt. It only did 23K damage once. And there it is again. However, I'm gonna attack a few times. As you can see, I'm gonna build that charge over here. This one here, nope, not that one. This one here, charge point. I'm gonna go in and with the dash attack, I get an additional 13K damage. Now the dash attack is pretty straightforward. However, what you also need to do is actually cancel the dash attacks. And I know this is not gonna be applicable to everybody, but if you have like the Lin, or if you're gonna be using the Awakening, uh, Tianlang's Awakening, as you can see over here, each use of Vault Weapon skill or Discharge skill gives one free dodge attempt up to three attempts which means that you can even dash more. I would actually highly recommend using this if you are using the Tianlang. However, Samir is always going to be good. You can definitely use the Samir. But when you start combining Tianlang with things like this, which gives you more dodges, as well as the Lin skill. So I'm just going to drop that. But uh, the Lin skill E, this one over here, as you can see, I've dropped a field. I'm going to go back to Tianlang over here. And then what I'm going to show you is like the whole bunch of dashes. See that dash is not getting consumed and I'm dashing so fast, right? I'm going dash into dash into a dash attack. Uh, and it's really making you feel like Cloud Strife. And so the important thing about this, the continuous dash, is that you actually have to cancel it midway, right? And the reason that you want to cancel it midway is because there is actually a massive aftercast duration. So if you go the full dash and then tack, dash, attack, dash, attack, that's going to take like way too long. What you really want to be doing is like dash and then attack about like maybe 0.5 seconds after. It's a very similar to your frig dash attack. You want to like cancel like half the dash, right? Because if you don't, as you guys already know, it's a... DPS loss, baby. <laughs> And so moving on to the skill over here. Now, this is the important one in which the normal attack summoning thing actually has an impact. So uh, unleash a barrage of attacks. Look at that freaking fat ratio, 936%. I don't know who at Hotter thought it'd be a good idea to lead that bad boy in. And if I go over to discharge, as you can see, 844%. Pretty sure that's the highest in the game out of every single character. Uh, maybe it'll be nerfed a little bit for when it releases on the official servers, but that's what it looks like right now on the test server. But the cool thing about this skill is that it transforms enemies and your summons within a certain range into electrified entities. Up to three electrified entities can exist at a time. So what that means is that if you're mobbing and there are three or more mobs, then it's okay to just use the skill as well as the discharge. Because if I click into the discharge, you will see transforms enemies and your summons within a certain range, like the exact same effect of the electrified entity. So what exactly is an electrified entity? Let me show you that first. And so I'm going to use the skill, the weapon skill. And what you're gonna notice is that there is a marker on the bottom of this cactus now. This denotes an electrified entity. And so what exactly happens with an electrified entity is that if I do the dash attack thing on them, it will actually take more damage. So I'm gonna hit it a couple more times uh, to charge up a couple of dash attacks. And you can see he's still electrified entity. I'm going to dash attack and you'll see that there is actually an extra additional Thunderbolt strike. Uh, sometimes it's four, I don't know why, but there's three over there. And so for some reason this field dropped down but this is the summon field that I wanted to show you guys next. So this one, remember, it's your normal attack, da 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 da, and then you can drop a field right there. And so there's the field. Now, the interesting thing about the field and its interaction with the discharge is that the field is a summon. So what that means is that if I use the E skill or the weapon skill, what you're gonna notice is that boom, there are two electrified entities. And so what that means is that I'm going to do the dash attack and boom, there's even more, there's even more attacks. Look at all of that. There is so many attacks. And so what that means is that every time you use your skill or your discharge for Tianlang, what you wanna do is make sure that the summon is actually already on the ground, but a bing, 
And so you saw that I put a new field down and unfortunately the electrified entity has worn off because I essentially refreshed it. But you want the field down before you actually go ahead and use your E, but it being bada boom. And so you're gonna see there are two of them there and I'm just gonna go dash attack on them. Look at how many hits that is. That is like four hits or five hits. It's one for the normal attack and then four of the uh, lightning bolts. And so as you can imagine, if there was like another cactus and another cactus, if there were three units and they were all electrified, then it's going to actually scale and scale and scale. So from a mobbing point of view, it's really strong. However, if you're versing like a boss, only one kind of mob on the field, what you wanna do is lay this guy down, boom, and then activate or rather electrify entity them both. And then you're gonna get even more hits. Like look at that, one plus four. One plus four, right? So you wanna go through all of that and that's just big damage. So again, what I just described, the electrified entities and like uh, marking the summons, it applies to both the skill Dubhi or Dube, or it's like Dubstep, and the Discharge Obliterator as well. We'll talk about uh, the Discharge in a second. Now, moving on with the skill, you gain Vault Sense when Dubhi, or is it, oh God, is it Dubhe? I don't know, let me know down in the comments below what you think. But essentially what Vault Sense does is that it looks at the other two weapons that you have and gives you additional Vault damage. Now, it says Vault Attack over here, but I've tested it, it doesn't actually add any vault attack to your attack stats. Whenever any buffs actually uh, increase your attack or anything, it does usually show up over here. However, it did not show up over here when I used uh, my weapon skill to get the vault sense. And so therefore, my conclusion is that this is not actually vault attack, this is vault damage. And this is actually reinforced by one of the advancements. If I come down over here, I uh, see boost Dubhi's vault sense and it's gain 10% vault damage. I believe that is also how it is in CN as well. So uh, good to know. And so all this means is that if you are using the Tianlang weapon as well as another vault weapon, you're going to get a 6% vault attack. And that's probably going to apply to the majority of you who are using uh, Tianlang with Lin. If you unfortunately weren't able to get Lin, you could definitely use like the Tianlang with the uh, Samir or Nemesis plus Crow. And so therefore you'd get plus 12% vault damage, which is actually pretty good as well. However, because of the lack of Lin, your playstyle is probably Probably going to be a little bit different. And so moving through, you can see the electrified entity over here. This is what makes up one of those four lightning bolts that actually shot down as we did the uh, dash attacks against the electrified entity enemies. And then last of all, we have this bad boy over here, which is essentially every time you use a vault skill or a discharge, I'm going to take your HP away. So I'm going to show you exactly that. Uh, I'm, I have this much HP. I'm going to use a skill and then boom, there goes my HP. And so the reason that this is really good is because it makes Tianlang into like a Berserker style player. Because remember, a lot of Tianlang's damage is actually based on HP lost. So if we lose more HP and then we do a whole bunch of bursts, so maybe we stack up to five charges and then uh, we are on low HP and then we go ahead and drop the field and just go dash, 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 dash. That's probably gonna be the most optimal way to actually like consume all of those five charges and maximize your damage. However, the interesting thing is, is that this consumes 30% of current HP to deal additional vault damage equal to 45% of the consumed HP. What that means is that the more HP you consume, the more damage that this effect is going to do. So if you're at 100% HP, it's going to consume 30% HP. And then of that 30% HP, it's going to convert it into the damage. It's going to take 45% of that 30% and convert that into damage. Versus if you're on maybe like 50% HP, it's only gonna take 15% of your current HP. And then of that 15%, it will then do the 45% multiplier. So it's kind of like a trade-off. I believe like the Crow Discharge, it'd be in your best interest to actually use it when your HP is high. But otherwise it's not really like that easy to control this. You kind of got to choose between playing with high HP, taking advantage of this one over here or abusing the dash attacks which is going to be triggered by using this one over here and dependent on HP lost. As for my opinion as to what's better, man, frick, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to like spam and spam and spam. It's actually just really fun. If you guys have like haven't figured it out yet, I just like dump everything. I think at this point, everybody is kind of playing like a quick swap kind of comp. Boom, there goes my discharge. There goes my crow. I'm going to go into here. I have five charges. I'm going to dash attack, dash attack, dash attack, dash attack. And then I'm going to use my skill. Bada bing, bada boom, and I completely forgot to lay down the field. I, I should, I don't know, watch my own guides. But as you can see, it's kind of like quick swapping and that's kind of it. There's not really enough like for me right now to kind of be thinking like, oh, I am on low HP. I should uh, go over to Crow and uh, yeah, it's really like, it's really freaking hectic. 
However, just because I'm too lazy to do the calculations doesn't mean everybody else is. So I'm sure that there is going to be some theory crafter out there that will actually do the analysis of like which skill order you should do to consume your HP to maximize your damage. Like at face value, I would say that if you do have the Crow uh, C6 or A6 with the Claudias, the four Claudia matrices, I'm sure that that is probably going to be the first one that you want to do because it's just scaling so freaking hard. Uh, a lot of you vault mains already know Crow C6, Claudia matrices is like pretty much the best vault damage that you can do right now. And so back to the skill over here, anytime we cast any vault weapon skill or discharge, it consumes 30% of the current HP. And so what that means is that we're going to be constantly on low HP. If I'm not going to run Nemesis, how exactly do I heal? Well, it's what comes right after. So after eight seconds or when HP is lower than 10%, recover 5% of missing HP every second for eight seconds. Now, uh, this is an interesting one because what you can do is you can space out like the skills as well as the discharges to kind of get your HP like recovering, recovering, recovering so that you're always healthy. So therefore you don't actually need the nemesis. And so what I mean by that is that, for example, I would use like the crow skill and then after eight seconds, you're going to start seeing the healing. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then tick. Tick, there we go. There it is, one, two, three, whatever. And then in that time, like if I wasn't waiting, I would actually have swapped into my Lin instead and then gone over into my Tianlang so that I can kind of like space it out so that I am constantly ticking with the HP. Now, that is probably more worth it if you're trying to go for like the current HP thing. And so as you can see, I'm ticking again. I'm gonna discharge, bada bing, bada boom. And it's just gonna keep on ticking. I'm just gonna keep on healing. However, the good thing is that Every time I do switch or every time I use the weapon discharge, I am going to be losing HP, 30% of the HP. So I don't think it's gonna be too hard trying to maintain low HP. I don't think it's gonna be really like critical for you to run Nemesis. And so yeah, that's kind of why like my current preferred set is actually the Tianlang, the Crow, and the Lin. I will talk a little bit more about the Crow later. That should wrap up the remaining passive over here with the HP recovery. I'm gonna move over to the Discharge, and we've talked about this one already, the Electrified Entities. Put the Summon down, turn it into an Electrified Entity, do AoE damage, uh, as you can see over here. And then the last effect of the Discharge is identical to the skill again. So the interesting thing about this guy over here is that its range is massive. It is like a big, big circle. I would say that it's probably as big as um, as Lin's E. So if I drop that E over here, you can see the bounds over there, right? And the bounds like over here. I think that Tianlong's discharge might actually be as big as that. Maybe a little bit smaller, but it is freaking massive. And so with the kit out of the way, let's quickly talk about the advancements in which the A1, you gain one stack of superconductor per charge. This one is pretty cool because it increases your max HP, but it also increases the damage received. And so if you can stack this up to eight times, 7.5%, so it goes up to 60% max HP extra, that is going to enable you to do so much extra damage because of like the current HP, uh, the lost HP, kind of function from the lightning bolts and all of that. Otherwise, at A3, we have release any vault weapon skill or discharge skill to get two discharges. Gain hyperbody at eight superconductor stacks. Now, what exactly that looks like is that as I get these charges, so uh, I need to swap to this weapon and go da 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 I do my freaking breakdancing shit. And you can see over here, oh wait, I'm not getting any charges. So that's why I'm not getting that buff. I just need to consume all of my charges. And then as I charge up, so you can see this one over here, one a charge and I go break dance. And so you can see, boom, that went to three, that went to two. It's going to go to four and three. And it's going to go one more, five and five. Okay, I don't know how I got that extra one over there. But this guy over here is your superconductor stacks. And so what you can do is you can refresh it before it goes down. However, you have to actually use up those stacks before you can restack the superconductor stacks. On the other hand, what you can do is you can use skills and discharges to stack it up. So A3 is very much in my eyes, a quality of life. Some people really love it because of the hyper body at eight superconductor stacks. And if you're doing like the rotations properly, you'll pretty much always be at eight stacks. And so yeah, the A3, the hyper body, I think is, you know, it's quite good. It doesn't really make me like really want to roll for it. Like for example, uh, uh, A3 Lin over here. Her A3, if you guys don't know, is it makes her flowers essentially homing. And that makes me really want the A3. And on top of that, it also increases the duration of the Moonlight Realm to 20 seconds. And on top of that, it also reduces the summoning time, the intervals down to 0.3 seconds. This makes me want to roll for an A3 Lin. This A3 Tianlang 
like it's good it's quite good but it's like oh it's not like crazy broken good you know what i'm saying <laughs> and then after that we have the each superconductor stack increases final damage by one percent so if we can only go up to eight superconductors then your final damage can only go up to eight percent with the a5 kind of mid and then lastly we have the boost dub he's vault sense for everyone other vault uh, weapon sense. So previously where we were like, okay, if you have one other vault weapon, like what I have here, you gain 6% vault damage boost. Now it's going to be 10% for each one. So this one gives me 10%. And if I had a nemesis here, for example, so I had three of them, I would get 20% vault damage boost, which is actually really freaking good. However, a lot of us are going to be using the Tianlong with the Lin. And so the max benefit we'll get from here is like an extra 4% vault damage, which is kind of, it's kind of so, so. And so in terms of my recommendation for how far you should go for the advancements, like the A1 is good. The A3 is good. The A5 is kind of mid, like 8% final damage. Yeah, not bad. And the A6 is also like, well, if you're going to be using Lin anyway, at best, you're going to get 4% damage increase for vault. I would say... A0 or A1 is actually like really, really freaking good. And the reason for the A0 recommendation is that, well, we just got our rerun for Nemesis and we're about to get a rerun for Claudia. I think that we are rotating through these banners so fast that my original recommendation stands. Roll for A0 of as many characters as you can. And then when the meta is finally figured out, like we finally got Fenrir, Alyss and all of them, you can then start rolling for the dupes if you really want to. But because these reruns are happening so fast, I really do think that getting a copy of every single weapon and then like potentially waiting for them to enter the pool to then buy them, I really do think that is the move, especially for the free to play slash low spenders. And the recommendation for the A1 over here, the superconductor, is because the 7.5% HP uh, boosting up to 60% HP is actually quite significant, right? Because of the, not only the damage, but also the survivability. However, if you do plan to play Tianlang only as like a shatterer, then you could definitely get away with only an A0 because none of these things over here actually do anything for his shatter at all. And so where I was like, oh, Saki A1 is incredibly good. Uh, Lin A3 is incredibly good. For Tianlang over here, I do think that A0 is actually gonna be more than enough. Of course, if you're gonna whale, then you're gonna whale and just go ahead. Uh, let's talk about matrices. So as always, you really wanna determine who exactly you are spending most time in. If it's Tianlang, then you're gonna be running your Samir, Samir, as well as your Crow and Crow. Could you run your Tianlang on the Tianlang? Yes, of course. This is a fantastic set of matrices. However, again, most of us are free to play, low spenders, probably are not gonna be rolling on the matrices. But just a quick reminder that most of the matrices from 2.0 onwards have this uh, this matrix effect is also active in the offhand slot, which means that it is going to be providing this effect even though it's not on the field. So you could stick this onto a support, like just like onto a third character, never go into them and this would still work. And it's for these reasons that a lot of people were saying, oh man, you should hold off of the uh, the Claudia matrices, which actually turned out to be really freaking cracked. But yeah, like the Cobalt matrices or however, like these ones, are the real juices. You want to have eventually in the long term a set of like these ones for your vault team. You want a set of the Lin ones for the whenever you use Lin and etc. etc. However, the other alternative to Tianlang's uh, instead of using Samir and Crow, you could definitely use your shadow matrices. So maybe your King or maybe uh, your Shiro as well. Especially because not only does he have a significant shadow value at 12.5, but if I didn't emphasize it enough already, look at these freaking ratios. Like, I'm pretty sure if a mob actually came up and he's like, oh, I'm gonna put my shield up, it's at 100%. If you freaking use the Tianlang, the E skill or like the weapon skill, it's just gonna break it in one shot. I freaking bet you. And so yeah, that's kind of the matrices for Tianlang over there. I guess the last thing I haven't talked about is the team composition itself. Like I haven't gone really in depth. And this is what you see on the screen is what I prefer because of the crow with the massive support. So at the C6, after using a skill, Increase vault damage dealt to target by 20% for 20 seconds. So essentially, uh, 45 second cooldown on his E skill, on his weapon skill. Use it, you get extra vault damage for 20 seconds, uh, 20%. However, on top of that, we also have his cracked out discharge. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Crow with the Claudia matrices scales like freaking crazy. So you see this guy over here, you deal damage equal to 65.2% of attack. When you equip the Claudia matrices, and I'm pretty sure I've covered this before. This guy over here for the four piece set, increase the discharge damage by 58 up to 126% damage for 15 seconds. And combining that with Crow, 
99% of the time, I'm pretty sure it's the highest amount of damage that you can do in global server. And so most of you probably already know, but this guy stays on the field even after you change weapons. So it's kind of like off field damage. That is also another massive reason as to why I like this, because if I use this or if I use Crow's E uh, weapon skill, then I can just switch to either Lin or Talon and keep doing the DPS with those two as a main DPS. Now, on the other hand, what we could also have is the Samir here or the Samir here or the Nemesis here or the Nemesis here. Now, the reason why I don't want to use Samir is because of the endurance. But on top of that, Tianlong is certainly main DPS material. I do believe that Samir spin to win is actually very competitive with the Tianlong. However, I would much, much rather use something like Crow and off-field DPS to kind of support the Tianlong rather than like always constantly thinking, oh, should I be in Tianlong or should I be in Samir? Which one is better DPS? And so the other alternative would be the Nemesis. And so Nemesis over here, just give you a flat 15% uh, volt attack, which is very nice. It could give you healing capabilities, but generally speaking, I personally wouldn't run much healing uh, or additional healing for the Tianlong, but Nemesis can certainly just be like a stat stick. So for example, if I had a Nemesis over here, for example, I could just have Tianlong with the uh, Samir and the Crow matrices. I could have Lin with her own matrices. I don't know why there's a Shiro there. And I could just use the Tianlong matrices on the Venus, on the Nemesis. And so, yeah, it's just always like up to what you have, right? Like not everybody's going to have all of these characters. These are three limited characters, three limited weapons. I think something like this is probably more realistic considering this is a permanent weapon. Uh, you probably rolled for Lin and Tianlong is right here. But with all of that said and done, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And so my guys, let me know if you are going to be rolling for this six spear. I think I will be because it seems like a lot of fun. Actually, by the time you watch this video, I probably would have streamed already doing the pulls. I'll be pulling for Lyra as well. Lyra guide probably coming out tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if you do want a Lyra guide as well, but really let me know if you are going to be pulling for this sick bro, because out of all of the characters so far, I think I might like Tianlong like you know, he's probably like top three. Anyway, you already know the drill. Like, subscribe, notification bell on. And as uh, as your girl Shirley once said, all good things must come to an end. Ooh. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.